Okay, so I've been a huge Evernote user for a long period of time for capturing knowledge and creating a second brain, but recently I've gotten more and more into Notion. So in today's video, I'm going to be diving into the world of note-taking apps and give you my thoughts on how to choose the app that's right for you and look at how I use note-taking apps in general. Now with loads and loads of note-taking apps available, it can be really confusing and hopefully this video saves you a ton of time when it comes to selecting a note-taking app. So hit that subscribe button and let's get into things. Now if you want to stay productive, Productive, you need to be capturing information and storing it in a logical way. We've all been in that annoying situation where you've read or researched something, haven't saved it, and then had to go through the whole process again, whether it's searching for flights, studying for an exam, or publishing the socials. Now, over the last 15 years, I've used everything from physical diaries and bits of paper to Word and pretty much every note-taking app out there that you can think of to store and organize information, which I can then come back to at a later date. For me personally, I simply want a system that allows me to capture and organize information which I can then come back to whether that's active recall questions to revise for an exam, storing key learning points from a business book or mapping out to-do lists. There are really three levels to what I want to achieve. These are capturing information, storing information and organizing information all so I can come back to it quickly and use the information for a particular project at a later time. Now note-taking apps have become much more complex with collaboration features and AI organization as they try to stand out and make our lives even easier. But this can lead to overcomplication and a paradox of choice. In short, when using these apps, I've tried to focus down on how they save time and maximize results simultaneously. I want you to keep that in mind as we go through the note-taking applications individually and which ones are best suited for accomplishing your goals. For me, there are really three reasons to use a note-taking app at all. Firstly, life management, then productivity management, and then personal knowledge management. So let's dive into each of those to help you make your choice. First up, life management is sort of a macro view on note taking where you want the app to help you schedule your day, take notes of ideas and inspirations, or let's say plan a vacation across somewhere like Europe. Next we have productivity management. This is mostly collaboration focused and it's ideal for running a business, managing your team, or working on a school project with a group of other people. And thirdly, we have studying what I tend to call personal knowledge management. This is how you master new topics and subjects throughout your life and you continue to learn by storing and recalling information. One key thing I want to point out here is that the end goal of all these systems is to have a system that makes executing on your information as easy as possible. For example, if you're planning a vacation, you want to store ideas as you research the trip, but then you want to be able to come back later to the ideas that you stored and make booking, travel, and accommodation way, way easier. It's not just about pass through taking notes, it's about creating a process and system that makes your life easier. With all that in mind, let's take a look at how each of these apps fulfills each of these needs. So is there really a single perfect note-taking app? Well, I'll be focusing on the two big note-taking apps out there, Evernote and Notion first. However, I'll also be talking about some of the up and coming apps and features that are driving change within the note-taking industry. So first things first, you need to understand that what might be the perfect note-taking app for me isn't necessarily the right thing for you. And everyone learns differently and every app is built around a specific set of tools that may or may not fit the way you retain your knowledge. That being said, let's dive into Evernote first. Now, now, if I could sum up Evernote in one phrase, it would be your own personal digital library. The way it functions is that with each individual piece of information, it kind of acts like a page in a book. You not only assign specific pages to these books, but you categorize them to make them easier to find later, just like the Dewey Decimal System in a library. Now, I have my Evernote set up with different notebooks relating to different parts of my life and projects I'm working on. I use the Evernote Web Clipper on my Mac and on my phone to quickly store web pages or PDFs into individual notes, which I can then come back to later. I'll also use the tag categorization system and pin keynotes I frequently use to the top of Evernote. I've also used the collaboration features. For example, when I was running a micro VC firm in the health tech space with my friend James, we collaborated on keynotes and meeting agendas. And then when I helped James set up his own health tech PR company, we also collaborated on things like pricing and brainstorming ideas and pulling in real world images. Now, Evernote has a lot of pros. For instance, it easily connects with Apple services as well as Google Docs, Calendar and Google Google Drive. You can also organize your notes in all sorts of different ways, adding shortcuts and even connecting them via hashtags for easy search. There's also a sketching mode for those of you who like to insert visual components during note taking. Now one of the coolest features is the ability to cut and paste any web data into your app. Suppose you're doing research for an article. You could paste an entire medical study into Evernote, then use simplification tools to instantly remove extraneous items like graphs or references. Evernote also allows you to create and assign tasks along specific due dates. Now my my favorite feature, however, is the OCR technology. This allows 
me to use my camera phone to select a piece of text from a book or physical product and then save it as an edible text in a note. I've used this extensively when reading physical books, saving lecture notes, or even grabbing text from a slide presentation. But Evernote does have some downsides too. It's super helpful in terms of life management and productivity management. However, there isn't much by way of personal knowledge management. If you want to use specific spacing or turn notes into active recall questions, you'll need to use a third party app like Shaken or Quizlet. On top of that, as you add more and more to your library of notes, you could start to see some significant slowdown in the app and some of the older notes get lost as you add newer notes. Now, in summary, one of the best things about Evernote is that it's very cost effective. You can get most multi-device functionality via the free version with the personal and professional versions setting you back around $799 or $99. There's also Evernote Teams, which is $1499 per user per month. And it's important to note that this is the only way to get collaboration out of the app. Now, before we move on to talk about Notion, I want to talk about some of the up and coming note taking applications first, particularly Obsidian and Remnote. While these aren't as popular or widely used as Evernote or Notion, they do have some features that the other two lack. I'll be looking at more note taking apps in detail in a top 10 note taking app video too. So do hit that subscribe button if you want a deeper, more comparative look at these apps. But first, let's take a look at Obsidian. Now Obsidian's received a lot of flack for its simple, plain text design. It's essentially like opening up a notepad document and you can't collapse points or clear up your workspace. However, its personal knowledge management tools are quite impressive. For instance, it allows you to link up pages so you can jump back and forth between shortcuts. You can also pull old notes into current documents and edit them simultaneously. Finally, it also has a 3D graph view that allows you to visually navigate your knowledge base, which I think is a really cool touch. Next up is Remnote, and this has also started to capture some of the personal knowledge management market. This has a lot to do with its use of space repetition. For example, you can actually convert your notes into flashcards for studying, which perfectly facilitates the active recall learning method that I encourage. Just like Obsidian, it also has link features where you can edit two documents simultaneously. But while it's fully customizable, it doesn't have a mobile app or collaboration tools at the moment, which makes it a bit useless in terms of project management if you have a team. Finally, I want to talk about Mem. Mem sets up your note-taking workspace a little bit like an email client and organizes notes by dates, encouraging you to work through your inbox. Mem uses workflows that allows you to quickly capture and organize information. For example, their Twitter bot allows you to save Twitter threads and you can schedule regular Mems to start each day. The main feature of Mem, however, is that it self-organizes your information under the inbox layout and connects similar notes automatically, which gets around that problem of losing older notes as you add new ones. The problem with lots of these note-taking apps, Evernote included, is that while they're great for capturing and organizing knowledge, they lack the ability to create systems and processes that help automate using this knowledge. And this typically needed the notes to be connected to a productivity system like Asana, Trello, ClickUp, Airtable, or Excel if you wanted to create a system or process that helped to convert your stored information into a project. And that's where Notion comes in. Now, Notion is the other industry leader, and it was recently valued at $10 billion. But did you know that in 2015, two years after launching, Notion nearly died? It was in fact the introduction of databases to their note-taking system that really skyrocketed them to success. Now, if you ask me, Notion is the application that best combines life management, productivity management, and personal knowledge management functions. Notion works using blocks and databases, which allows for greater levels of organization and customization of your information. Databases allow for notes to be linked together and organized into tables, lists, and templates. Now, I've been using Notion for planning out YouTube content and other videos, creating wikis for my various companies, and organizing social and marketing content. For each of these, I first create a note template that fits into an organized table structure, and this then allows me to quickly add information to templates. I'll grab ideas for YouTube videos or social posts using the Save to Notion Chrome extension and store these in a Notion database. The system then allows me to organize this content by date, which I'll then publish and collaborate with my team, where other note-taking apps really struggle with this. Now, Notion has a lot of pros. It's got a mobile app so that you can access notes on the go and built-in collaboration features so that multiple users can edit the same document. It also allows you to split each item into personal and shared, so you have private docs and public ones. If you want to streamline your workflow further, you can download free templates. This can get you started with the app much faster than learning it the hard way. Now, let's talk specifically around personal knowledge management and studying, which you'll remember is what I said Evernote was largely missing. Well, with Notion, you get a ton of active recall functions, just like the ones built into Obsidian and Remnote. For instance, you can toggle bullets, which means you can hide the answers from yourself to further facilitate learning. And no matter the type of content you're covering, you can easily turn each note into an active recall 
import question at the touch of a button. You can also link and import data from a long list of sources, including Docs, Dropbox, and Word. And it also has a task prioritization and scheduling function for life management and productivity, as well as shared team calendars. Finally, Notion is cheap. The free version has almost everything you could need, but if you do choose to upgrade, you're looking at around about $4 a month for personal use and just over $8 a month per team member for teams. Notion also has a huge range of templates created by other users. Some of these are premium templates, but a lot of great ones are free too. Notion does have some downside. It's an all-round design that seeks to satisfy as many people as possible, and that means it doesn't really specialize in any one area. Normally, applications like this can be lackluster, and it's true that there are some things Notion could do better. But due to the database functionality and block design, it has an added layer of complexity with a community of how-to guides popping up to help you navigate through the difficulty, because it does have a very steep learning curve. Customer support for the app isn't great either from my experience, which could rub some users up the wrong way. The mobile app is also a little bit clunky, and there have been times where I've defaulted back to Apple Notes or Evernote simply because it's quicker and simpler to jump into capturing information if you're writing a note on the go. It's also worth mentioning that if you are running a large team, for example, I have a company with over 50 people, there are much more robust productivity apps out there like ClickUp, Jira, or Asana, which bring in more team and tracking features. And while Notion can work really nicely as a team wiki, you'll probably want one of these more robust enterprise grade productivity apps to get the most out of your team. So there's definitely room for improvement, but I see it as a far more powerful note-taking system and active learning tool than anything else in the competition. So whether you're studying for exams, working on a team project, or simply trying to manage your daily life, Notion seems to be in the best position to help when it comes to turning your knowledge into actionable outputs. It's really helped me to create systems like posting to socials or writing blog posts that make these processes as easy as possible so that I can jump into Notion and get down to doing them. But remember, the best note-taking app is the one that works best for you, and you need to try them all and judge them by your own preferences. Now, I'll put up a deep dive into how I take notes in the cards at the end of this video, which is definitely worth a look if you're struggling to organize your own workflow. And do let me know in the comments below if you have any particular favorites in the note-taking app category. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing. Do hit that notification bell to get notified when more note-taking and productivity app videos drop, and I'll catch you again next time.